We'll keep an eye out west as we head toward the evening for the potential to see some strong to at times severe thunderstorms out that way. To the east, mainly quiet, especially to the southeast as well. Low temperatures only getting into the low to mid 60s. Tuesday featuring a chance for showers and thunderstorms that migrates eastward later in the afternoon and evening. Out west, though, mainly dry and hot as well. We'll talk about that and the rest of your forecast coming up. But until then, first at four starts right now. Live from Killaland Media Group, Killaland News, first at four. Coming up, we're going to tell you what we know about a weekend shooting in Minneapolis that left four children hurt. Plus, why some protesters in Minnesota are heading to Chicago for the DNC and... America's top diplomat says the fighting must stop now. I'm Rami Innocencio in Tel Aviv with what Israel and Hamas are saying with getting that ceasefire and hostage deal done. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. Two men from Omaha are accused of scamming a South Dakota tribal casino out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. They also face charges in federal court. Court documents unsealed today say the alleged scheme involved a series of phone calls to the Grand River Casino near Mobridge back in February. The callers convinced an employee that the casino owed $700,000 in fees for an audit or inspection. The caller said that the money needed to be paid immediately. The employee also received a text message from someone claiming to be his supervisor who told him to assist the callers. The worker emptied the casino's vault, drove to Mitchell and handed over a box with $352,000 cash inside. The Omaha men are charged with federal wire fraud, theft from a casino on tribal lands and transporting stolen money. A Rapid City man accused of abusing and killing a newborn baby is behind bars. Less than an hour ago, authorities announced they have arrested 26-year-old Shamar Tay Bennett. He is charged with murder and child abuse for a November 2022 crime. The victim was just a month old. A 27-year-old woman is also accused in the case. She was in court on Friday and is being held on a $100,000 cash-only bond. Officials say that an inmate at the Mike Durfee State Prison died at a local hospital last night. 86-year-old Dallas Crouch was serving time for sexual exploitation and loitering within a community safe zone. He is the 10th state inmate to die this year. Kelloland News recently looked back at inmate deaths over the past decade. This is the 93rd inmate death within the DOC since 20. 2015. No cause of death was provided by the DOC. All right, let's get a look at our weather forecast. It's a little on the warm side today, isn't it? Yeah, I'm afraid our autumn weather is gone for now, Adam. There's the phrase there, for now. We are, however, going to get some improvement, at least in terms of uh, maybe trying to cool down a little bit. Eventually, just not anytime soon. A uh, more to the point, we do have to keep an eye on the skies later this evening. Showers and storms will be on the way in as we go through the evening and once they get here in some capacity, they stick around for a while through at least the middle of the week. Late week rain and a couple of thunderstorms are also possible. Again, not for everybody, but for a couple of locations uh, now and again, which will then lead to actually not a bad weekend. We warm up, we're mainly dry, and it's certainly going to feel like we are still very much in the summer season. We're at 82 with a view downtown. Uh, some fair weather clouds above, but that's really just about it. A southeast wind at six miles per hour. Meanwhile, out to the west, we suddenly jumped up. We were stuck in the 70s for a little while out in Rapid City, now up to 86. But notice that southerly breeze at 14 miles per hour. That's going to help bring in a little more warmth and a little more moisture out that way as well. 88 for Phillip and Pier. Aberdeen sitting at 84 with Mitchell, 87 in Valentine with not much of a breeze to speak of to the east at least. Knows around 5 to 10 miles per hour out of the south by southeast. If you're in central and western South Dakota, yeah, it's a bit of a breezy day, 10 to 20 miles per hour out of a similar direction, but the difference is noticeable all the same. We are going to be keeping an eye on the skies later tonight. There is that slight risk for severe weather out along the west western portion of South Dakota, including the hills over the Hot Springs, Rapid City, up into Belfouche, and now for the western portion of Harding County. Buffalo, you're in that marginal risk later this evening, along with Bison, and then areas of uh, western and central Jackson and Bennett County going as far south and east. We'll talk about that in a little more detail. Go through the rest of your forecast as we head through the hour. 
Thanks, Adam. Well, two boys and two girls ages 11 to 14 are hurt after a shooting in Minneapolis over the weekend. One of the girls was shot in the head. Investigators say they found evidence of at least 30 gunshots at the scene. As Barrett Leone with our CBS affiliate in Minneapolis explains, it's an act of violence many in the community are struggling to wrap their minds around. Police tape still stands Sunday morning. Four kids shot between 11 and 14 is outrageous. A small sign of the violence overnight. And everyone should be up in arms over it. Minneapolis Police Chief Brian O'Hara told WCCO a sedan followed the five minors in the stolen Kia and started shooting with the fully automatic weapon. While there's fewer of these cars being stolen, the activity that these juveniles inv are involved with has become more and more brazen. The chief says more needs to be done to prevent these crimes. We are failing to deter this behavior, and with that being said, we are failing these kids as well. I'm devastated. It's an effort Zion Baptist Church pastor Brian Heron is actively working on just down the road. My heart hurts for my community. <sighs> I don't really have any words right now. Heron tells us he works with youth on the streets to combat violence like this and wants to see a more collective effort to reach troubled families at the root of the problem. I'm not condemning parents. What I'm saying is parents have to be parents and if they need help, let's get the help that they need. An issue he says needs to be front and center. While it's a blow and while it's devastating, it should inspire us to do more and to want to do more to save our children. In North Minneapolis, Barrett Leone, WCCO News. The Minneapolis police chief says one of the five minors was arrested and two of the five kids involved were arrested in the past two weeks. He says the problems will continue until kids face consequences. As the Democratic National Convention gets underway, today Minnesotans are heading to Chicago to make their voices heard. Our CBS affiliate in Minneapolis was there as the group prepared to leave late last night. They were told that protesters will join thousands of people demanding protections for immigrants, urgent intervention in the climate crisis, and an end to funding for Israel's occupation of Palestine. Demanding an end to genocide is always the right thing to do. What Israel is committing is a genocide, so what we're demanding is that Israel stops its genocide and that in order for this to happen, that the U.S. ends USA to Israel. Nearly 100 protesters from Minnesota are expected to march, representing more than a half a dozen groups.